All right, today we're going to solve systems of equations again, but we're going to do it algebraically today. So the first technique we're going to learn is using substitution to solve a system of linear equations. To solve a system using the substitution method, you're going to line up your equations horizontally. So you'll have one of them and the other one. I don't know what form they'll be in, but you line them up horizontally to each other. You're going to solve one equation for one of its variables. And if you don't want fractions, pick a term that has a coefficient of 1. Once you get a letter alone, like this one already has a y alone, then you would cross over and substitute. Since I got y alone here, I'd substitute it for y there. So you'd plug in this, and then you would solve for whatever variable is left, which would be x. Once you get x alone, then you cross back over and you substitute it in for that equation, solve that for the remaining variable, and you'll have your xy coordinates of the intersection point. All right, so and then you're going to have to classify a system as consistent, inconsistent, dependent, and independent. Well, we learned this when we were doing graphing, and it's the same thing. If you get one solution, Okay, that means that the system is consistent and independent. If all the variables cancel out and what's left is true, then you have the exact same line, which means you have infinitely many solutions, which makes the system consistent and dependent. That's when one line is right on top of the other. This is where the lines cross one time. And the third classification that could happen is if there's no solution and algebraically that's when all the variables cancel and the statement left is false. And that's when you have two parallel lines which means the system is inconsistent and there's no solution. All right, so it says use substitution to solve the system of equations. So the first thing you do is line them up horizontally. So I'm going to have 2x plus y equals 7 my equals and my second equation is 3x plus 2y equals 13. So your first step is to pick a letter and get it alone. And if you don't want fractions, pick one that has a coefficient of 1. This x has a coefficient of 2. This y has a coefficient of 1. So, so far, that's the one I'm going for. This has a coefficient of 3. y has a coefficient of 2. If I pick any of the ones except for this one that I start, I'm going to make fractions getting it alone. So I'm going to get that y alone because then I will not make fractions. So to get that y alone, I'm going to subtract 2x. That cancels over there. You can't subtract an x from a constant, so I just drop it like it's hot. Negative 2x plus 7. Now I've got y alone. So step 3 says cross the line and substitute it. So since I got y alone, I'm going to cross over and I'm going to take out his y. And I'm going to replace it with the y I just got, which is negative 2x plus 7. So now if I solve this one, distribute the 2, I get 3x minus 4x plus 14 equals 13. And combine like terms, I get negative x plus 14 equals 13. To get x alone, I'm going to minus 14, I get negative x equals negative 1, divide by negative 1, I get x equals positive 1, and I'm halfway home. The 5 says i got to cross back over the line and substitute again. Now that i got x alone, when I cross back over, I'm taking out his x, which is going to be y equals negative 2 times what I solve or substitute for x which is a 1 plus 7. Solve this one, distribute the negative 2, I get negative 2 plus 7, and I get y equals 5. So my solution is x comma y. If you graph these two lines, they're going to intersect at 1, 5. And since there's exactly one solution, that makes my system consistent and independent. Okay, so if we try another one, I'm going to line them up horizontally, 3x minus y equals 12, 2x minus y equals 10. 
I have to pick a letter and get it alone. So I'm going to look at my coefficients. That one has a 1 and that one has a 1. So it's in between those two. It really doesn't matter which one you start with. So I like starting on the left, which means I'm going to get this y alone. 3x minus y equals 12. So I'm going to minus 3x. That gives me negative y equals negative 3x plus 12. Divide by negative 1. I get y equals 3x minus 12. So I lined them up. I got a letter alone, so I'm going to cross the line and substitute. Since I got y alone, I'm taking out as y. So that's 2x minus 1 times what I'm substituting. And I'm substituting 3x minus 12 for y. Okay, so I did that. Now i got to solve this. Distribute the negative 1. So I get 2x minus 3x plus 12 equals 10. Combine like terms, negative x plus 12 equals 10. Get x alone, minus 12, negative x equals negative 2. Divide by negative 1, I get x equals 2. So I solved it. Now I'm going to cross back over and substitute for x. So if I take out his x, I get y equals 3 times my substitution, minus 12. Substitute 2. Distribute, I get y equals 6 minus 12, so y equals negative 6, and my solution is 2 negative 6, which is one solution, which makes my system consistent and independent. Okay? Hold on, I'm just checking my math here. Okay. Alright, so you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got I4. Alright, so I'm going to line these up horizontally. So I have negative 2x minus y equals negative 14. 3x minus y equals 11. I'm going to pick one with a coefficient of 1, so either this one or this one. I'm going to pick this one. So to get that y alone, negative 2x minus y equals negative 14. I'm going to add 2x. I get negative y equals 2x minus 14. Divide by negative 1, I get y equals negative 2x plus 14. So then I'm going to substitute it in over here. I got y alone, so I'm taking out as y. So 3x minus 1 times my substitution equals 11. My substitution is negative 2x plus 14. Distribute the negative 1, I get 3x plus 2x. Oh, is that plus 14? Yeah, so minus 14 equals 11. Combine is 5x. Add 14 is 25. Divide by 5, and x equals 5. Substitute back over, take out as x, so I get y equals negative 2 times my substitution plus 14. I'm substituting 5, so y equals negative 10 plus 14, and y equals 4. So my solution is 5, 4, which makes my system consistent and independent. Alright, so how do you solve a system of linear equations in two variables using the substitution method? You need to describe those six steps. One, you're going to line them up horizontally. Two, get letter alone. Three, cross and sub. Four, solve. Five, cross and sub. Six, solve. 
describe the solution to a system of linear equations, it's still the intersection point. It's just now we're finding it algebraically instead of graphically. Okay, when is a system classified as consistent if there is a solution? When is a system classified as dependent if there is infinitely many solutions? And when is a system classified as independent if there is exactly one solution. Alright, that's substitution my friends. So now we're going to learn elimination. The, um, your book calls it the addition method. I call it the elimination method. And what you do, I use this when there isn't a coefficient of one on any of my variables. If there's not a coefficient of one, Substitution gets ugly because you make fractions and you guys hate fractions. So this is a way to avoid them. And what you do is you line them up. You've got to make sure they're all in standard form or that everything lines up right. And decide whether you want to eliminate the x's or the y's. If the pairs don't automatically cancel out, you're going to multiply the top by the bottom and the bottom by the top. And what I mean by that is you pick the coefficients of the top and the bottom. And then you're going to check your signs. If they're different, then you're going to make them the same. If they're the same, you're going to make them different. Then you add the equations, solve for the remaining variable, substitute, solve, and write your solution. So here we go. And the um, classification is the same, obviously. All right, so to use addition elimination, you line them up vertically. Merry Christmas, happy birthday to me. It already is. Then you decide who you want to eliminate, the x's or the y's. I'm going to pick the x's. And what I'm looking at then are the coefficients of the x's. And so what I mean by multiply the top by the bottom and the bottom by the top is this top 2 goes to the bottom and this bottom 3 goes to the top. And then you check your signs. 3 and 2, they came out the same, so I need to make them different. doesn't matter which one you make negative, I just always do the bottom. All right, so then I distribute, and the thing most people screw up on elimination is they forget to do the other side. You're not just doing this side. You've got to multiply every term in the equation by the top and the bottom. So my new top becomes 6x plus 21y equals 12. My bottom equation becomes negative 6x, negative 10y equals positive 10. And notice, now my x is cancel out when I go to add my equations. If I add, quote, add my y's, I actually subtract because the signs are different. I get 11y equals both positive, add is 22. To get y alone, I'm going to divide by 11, and I get y equals 2. So then it says, choose one of the original equations and substitute. So I'm going to go here to the bottom just because it's easier to draw my little arrow. And that's going to be 3x plus, plus 5 times my substitution equals negative 5. My substitution is 2. So I have 3x plus 10 equals negative 5. To solve for x, I'm going to minus 10. 3x equals negative 15, divide by 3, x equals negative 5, and my solution is negative 5, 2. One solution makes my system consistent and independent. Alright, so if we try this one, they're lined up vertically. I'm going to decide which variable to eliminate. And I notice that if I add right now, the x's cancel. So I do not have to do steps 2 and 3. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas to me. So I'm ready just to add them. The x's cancel. I get 5y equals 25. Solve. So I added them. Now I'm solving. Divide by 5. And y equals 5. Now I'm going to choose one of the original equations and substitute my y. Again, I, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to the top here just to show you. It doesn't matter. I usually just go to the bottom, but 
if I go to the top, <coughs> excuse me, and I do my substitution, that gives me 4x plus 10 equals 9, minus 10, minus 10, 4x equals negative 1, divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals negative 1 fourth. Now, you can write your solution as negative 1 fourth comma 5. You can write it as a decimal, negative 0.25 comma 5. Either one would be perfectly acceptable. And since there's one solution, again, we're consistent and independent. All right, you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got number one. All right, so they're lined up vertically already. I'm going to decide who to eliminate. Since I did X's last time, just to shake it up, I'm going to do Y's this time. So once you pick, those are the co coefficients that are going to move. So 7 goes to the bottom, 2 goes to the top. They came out the same, so I'm going to make one of mine negative, and it doesn't matter. I just did the bottom. So on top, if I distribute the 2, I get 6X plus 14Y equals 30. And on bottom, I get negative 35x minus 14y equals positive 28. And now the y's cancel. So I've got 6 minus 35, which is going to be negative 29x equals, if I add those, I get 58. And if I divide by negative 29, I get x equals negative 2. So now, if I substitute that back into one of my originals, I get 5 times my substitution plus 2y equals negative 4. I'm substituting negative 2, so that gives me negative 10 plus 2y equals negative 4. Add 10, I get 2y equals 6 divided by 2, y equals 3, so my solution is negative 2, 3, which again makes it consistent and independent. Alright, you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. Hopefully you got four zero. All right, I notice as I line them up and get ready to eliminate that my y's are ready to go, so I can skip those two steps and cancel that out. That gives me three x equals uh, negative eight plus twenty is positive twelve. So divide by three, and I get x equals four. Substitute that in. Um, oops. What did I just do? Let's erase everything. 3x equals 12. Divide by 3. x equals 4. Plug it in. I'm going to have negative 2 times my substitution plus 8y equals negative 8. I'm substituting 4, so I get negative 8 plus 8y equals negative 8. Add 8. I get 8y equals 0, divide by 8, and I get y equals 0, so my solution is 4 comma 0. Alright, so how do you solve a system using the elimination method? You can describe those steps. Line them up vertically, top by bottom, bottom top, 3, check your signs, 4, distribute, and add equations, 5, solve, 6, sub, 7, solve, 8, answer. You should do a much better job than me. Put those in complete sentences, obviously. And then the other ones we've already described. All right, so now what happens when 
you have either the same line or parallel lines. It was easy to see when we graphed. Algebraically, what does that look like? Well, if I solve this system and I decide what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick uh, the x's which means negative 1 goes to the bottom and positive 2 goes up. Since my signs are different, I need to make them the same. So I'm going to make that positive. So I have negative 2x plus 2y equals negative 4. I have positive 2x, negative 2y equals 0. And notice that now my y's are ready, or my, oh, my x's are ready to cancel, and, oh, my y's cancel. So that's 0. And on this side, negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. So when I added the equations, there's nothing left to solve because there's no variable left. So this is either the same line or they're parallel lines. Well, it depends on what's left is true or false. This is false. 0 never equals negative 4, which means there's no solution, which means your lines are parallel which means your system is inconsistent. Okay? Alright, you try one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And this time, you should get the same line. Alright, if I decide who to eliminate, I'm going to pick the y's because the coefficients are smaller. So one comes to the bottom, three goes up, they came out the same, so I need to make mine different, so I'm going to make the bottom negative. So if I distribute on top, I get 12x plus 3y equals 18. On bottom, I get negative 12x minus 3y equals negative 18. And once again, everything cancels and gives me 0 on this side. On this side, positive 18 minus 18 is 0. So there's nothing left to solve, which means it's either the same line or parallel lines. Well, this is true, which means it's the same line, which means there's infinitely many solutions, which means I'm, my line, or my system, is consistent and dependent. Alrighty. Oops, I forgot to say hit pause. Come back here. Right. Sorry. All right. So, we've already talked about these three times. Okay, these don't look right. What should you do? Again, sometimes, like if I was solving this one, I would want to do elimination because none of my coefficients are ones. But the problem is these don't line up. Well, you make them line up. You put them what we call in standard form, which means ax plus by equals c. And all that means is get your x and your y term on this side and your constant on that side. So if I minus 2y minus 2y, that gives me 3x minus 2y equals 1. If I get y on this side, add 3y, I get 9x plus 3y equals negative 5. Now they line up and you can go about your business. Okay, same with the one in the middle. My goal is if I want to do elimination is I need to get x and y on the left and the constant on the right. So for this one, I'm going to have to minus x. I'm going to have to add y. That gives me 2x minus 3y equals 4. This one, I'm going to have to minus 5y. That gives me 2x plus y equals negative 4. Now you can line those up and everything is good. Okay? When there's fractions, you can kill them. To kill dividing by 3, I multiply by 3. To kill dividing by 2, I multiply by 2. And to kill dividing by 6, I multiply by 6. But i got to do it to every turn. And then you cancel and multiply what's left. Here, the 3's are going to cancel, so I have 6 times 2 times 2, which is 24y. Here, the 2's are going to cancel, so I have 6 times 3 times negative 1 is negative 18x. Here, the 6's cancel, and I end up with plus 6. On the bottom equation, to kill a divide by 2, I multiply by 2. To kill, oops, to kill divide by 5, I'm going to multiply by 5. 
The twos cancel, that gives me 5y. The fives cancel, that gives me 4x. Nothing cancels, and that gives me 40. And now, well, I need to get standard form. So if I add 18x, I'm going to get 18x plus 24y equals 6. And here, minus 4x is going to be negative 4x plus 5y equals 40. And now, you can go about your business solving. Alright, so we are at homework. Homeworking. And I will see you next time.